Katie, everybody. Coming at you from out in the wilderness. Now, today's video is going to be kind of a mishmash of information. I'm going to throw in little tidbits here and there that I think you might find helpful or informative. Um, but the main reason for this video is <clears throat> pencil sharpeners. <laughs> now, let me back up a minute. YouTube comments, okay, people comments all kinds of stuff. Some, some comments are great, they're helpful, they're wonderful. Uh, but then some of the comments that people make, I'll address them with a video. Like, have you ever done this or have you ever done that? Or you should do this or you should do that. A lot of times I'll just so be like, here, watch this video. Well, one of the biggest comments I get is you should bring a pencil sharpener. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to remember if, if Daniel Boone or Davy Crockett brought a pencil sharpener or Cody Lundeen or Les Stroud. So, but anyway, uh, to the point, I actually brought a pencil sharpener and I'm going to see what it can do. And I think I already know ahead of time what it can do compared to a knife. And a lot of times, I don't know, there's a lot of times they had these little short videos on like Facebook and TikTok and, 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 and Instagram and stuff with all these neat little tricks that these little people do. And I, I think that's where the pencil sharpener thing got, got, came from. It's a bunch of little shorts with people using them and making shavings. But the true outdoors person will carry a knife, period. And I've got a funny saying about that here in a little while, but I've done jibber jabber two minutes, so I don't want to lose all my viewers from boredom. <laughs> so let's go over in the woods, out of the wind, and let's talk a little bit more about the difference between pencil sharpeners and knives and why I think you should just carry a knife. All right, this looks like kind of a decent place to sit down. So let's sit down and talk about this. And I got a bunch of junk in my backpack that I'm going to show you. Um, now, there's a few other things that I think that people talk about other than just pencil sharpeners. Uh, there's like these little Altoid survival kits and I've done a couple of videos addressing them. And it's kind of a erroneous falsity, if you want to call it that. Because if you call an Altoids 10 a supplemental kit, I'm fine with that. But don't call it a survival kit because it is not a complete survival kit. It is a supplemental kit, or it's a fishing kit, or it's a fire kit, all right? Now, there's a huge difference in bushcraft, camping, and survival. Camping, you bring your gear, sleeping bag, tent, you're camping, okay? Bushcraft, you bring more tools and build your shelter and your bed and all that kind of stuff. Survival is the one thing that you shouldn't joke about and kid around and mess around because people can get killed when it comes to wilderness survival and people thinking that they can like, where is that? I had one in here, so I don't even have it. It's like, oh, I've got a survival blanket. I'm gonna go out into the winter in the wilderness, you know, and survive. And uh, that stuff just doesn't happen. So the pencil sharpener thing, I think it'll be fun for camping or bushcraft, but it's definitely not a survival method. You need to bring proper tools which is a knife. And I'm also gonna talk about neck knives and I'm also gonna talk about machetes because something happened that makes me wanna talk about a neck knife. Now, small machetes, you can wear them on your belt. Large machetes, a lot of times I'll attach them to my pack and you can just attach them with some paracord and a carabiner, all right? And then a lot of times I'll have a knife attached to my machete, but enough of that. I just wanted to, I thought about that while I was thinking about it. So I'm going to pull this out and we're going to look at the difference between a knife and a pencil sharpener next, all right? Now oh, let's pull some of this stuff out right here. Okay, here's a bag. Got that bag and I got this bag. And then here's another machete and a knife. And I don't think we need that. May not need that right now. All right, let's look in here. We have... Okay, this is, <laughs> I kind of set this up as a joke. Uh, okay, that's a neck knife. All right, now most people, fire is important. It's as, it's as important as your knife. So a lot of people will have their beautiful bushcraft knife. This is a 73 Forge. They have their knife in a sheath that they wear on their belt with a ferro rod. Now, 
How many outdoorsy people that you have seen that carry their ferro rod with a pencil sharpener <laughs> attached? <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. I had to do it. Now, which would you carry and which is more effective? <laughs> all right, so let's dig around in here. We got more neck knives in here. I'm gonna look at all of this. We're gonna talk about all of these here in a minute. All right, so let's see here. We have two pencil sharpeners and then we have the infamous Altoids kit, okay? This is the Altoids kit. And when I, I see this, I think to myself, well, I don't know what to think. All right, so let's say that you got your average person with all their cute little doodads. Is this the pencil sharpener they're talking about? I hope not. I'm not even gonna try that because that thing, your shavings is just gonna drop all over the ground. I would assume that what they're talking about is one of these that has for smaller twigs, larger twigs, well, actually it means pencils, and then a place to put the shavings in, all right? So for me, that's not what I use. For me, what I'm gonna do is I take a knife of some kind. I take a knife and I make shavings, all right? That's what I do because a pencil sharpener sharpens pencils and maybe makes twigs and a knife does about 40 or 50 different things. So we're gonna go head to head and see how well a pencil sharpener holds up to a knife, all right? All right, so here we have our typical pencil sharpener and I picked up a stick up off the ground because I don't have a knife. So let's see how it does. It doesn't fit. <laughs> well, let's try the small end. Okay, the small end doesn't fit either, unless I break it off. So let's let's break it off about right here. Let's see. All right, so now now I got to break it off again. Boy, I wish I had a knife. Okay, now we're going getting somewhere. So let's take this and let's rub this thing around in here. <laughs> Once you get it going, I guess it cuts pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna cut on this thing for about two minutes and see what it comes up with. Look, you can already see inside it. It's filling up with shavings. All right, I'm gonna cut on this until this thing fills up. And then we're gonna get our knife and we're gonna make some shavings, all right? Now, I notice there's kind of a technique to this. You stick this in here and you kind of twist both. And I got to noticing it waves you Look, you can put more pressure on it as you're pushing down. All right. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. Oh, it just about fell apart. That means it's packed in. Oh yeah, they're exploding out. Look at that. All right. All right, now let's get, lay that down. Now let's get a knife like I normally carry. And we're gonna to try to make some shavings and we're gonna see, this was about three minutes worth and we're gonna see about what three minutes worth does for a, a knife, all right? I'm out here on my wilderness survival expedition with my knife and there's pretty much trees and limbs and sticks everywhere. And I've got one laying right here. So since it's standing upright, not on the ground, we are gonna walk over here to it and we are gonna try to make some shavings off of it. Just as it stands right here, we're gonna to try to make a few shavings. Let's see if I can adjust this down a little bit. All right, now, I have my neck knife. So let's see what it does compared to a pencil sharpener. Let's get the bark off. Now the bark is dry, so that's pretty good. Now, just having a knife goes against everything I ever believed in because normally I will carry a knife and a machete or a knife and a saw. All right, 
All right. Now that right there, All right, now I'm going to pick all these up on the ground right here. That was probably a minute or less than a minute. I'm going to pick all these up on the ground right here and see how they compare to the shavings from the pencil sharpener. All right, so let's pick all these up. Now, if it's raining, you want to take other measures to get your shavings. All right. Now, not all shavings are going to look like this. It depends on... It depends on it depends on the grind of the knife and it also depends on on the angle that you approach the wood so now i've lost a lot of shavings here but what we're going to do is we are going to okay we're going to put these over there on the log all right i think i've got enough see these all right so let's go over there and put them on a log and compare them now, I only spent probably less than a minute, so what I might do is I might have some fine shavings with a smaller stick that I can add to these because I spent like a total of three minutes with the pencil sharpener, so I deserve at least another minute with the knife. All right, so I found another stick on the ground. Now, it's kind of wet down here on the bottom. What if I can break it? Yeah, I can break it, but the core seems like it's a little bit dry. The bottom was wet, but the top is is pretty dry. All right, so let's lean this camera down here and see if we can get some fine shavings for our, our uh, ferro rod. Now, the pencil sharpener, you get what you get. But when you have a knife, you can get, have some coarse shavings, and then you can have some delicate fine shavings so that it'll catch the ferro rod spark quicker. Because remember, a ferro rod spark, even though it's like, I think it's like 3,000 degrees, you're guaranteed spark, but you're not guaranteed flame because you got to have the proper tender, all right? All right, so I got my old neck knife here. Pull it out. <clears throat> let's set this here now. Let's see. Let's see how we can do here if we can get some nice... Now, a lot of times they'll fall off the stick, but I'm going to try to make some of them stay on if I can because it all depends on the wood the grain of wood all right so I got a good bit of shavings right here I'd say that was less than a minute now let's pick up some of these. See how fine these are? I gotta pick up some of these. That's the only bad thing about this. This is this is the only part where the pencil sharpener absolutely excels is because at least it catches all of your shavings. Luckily the ground is not too dry right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna take these that are attached to the stick and we're gonna take them over here and compare them to the pencil sharpener shavings. So here's our original coarse shavings. And then these are the little fine shavings that I tried to make. And then these are the ones that are stuck on the stick. And I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to pull all these off in one batch. All right, good. See, that way you can take it and hold on to it and just set it on top. All right, so that's what I have right there. Now, let's take the pencil sharpener shavings and let's put them right here. All right, that's about three minutes worth of shavings. And then this is probably about two minutes worth of shavings. I probably should have timed it, but I didn't want to get that picky. All right, so let's see what what happens. Got a good old ferro rod. Let's see what happens. All 
There we go. Well, we got flying. We got flying. It worked. All right, so now I'm gonna pile them on there. And y'all at home, y'all can pay attention to see how long that flame lasts. All right, that's what you got to work with. And then while you're doing this, you're gonna have to stack small twigs on or leaves or whatever. You know, you're gonna have to pile stuff like this on there and try to get it to catch on fire. All right, so the pencil sharpener does work, all right? It does work. You can catch a ferro rod flame with that. All right, let's burn, let that burn down to nothing. I'll take a piece of bark here and just kind of mush that out. All right, that works. So now let's take this thing. Let's see how this works. I don't know, maybe I should let the wind die. Yeah, I'm gonna let the wind die down here. All right, I had to wait on the wind die down because it is winter. So, all right, let's see how this does. Oh, look at that. So now I'm gonna take this and set this on it. And then I'm gonna, oh, look at the wind blow. Look at the wind blow. And then there's my shavings. All right, now you tell me, and I could have made a whole lot more shavings and some of them fell on the ground over here. All right, now. <clears throat> What is our conclusion? Our conclusion to this is both work. But like I said, a pencil sharpener sharpens pencils and sharpens twigs. A knife will cut anything, any amount of shavings that you want, any size you want. You can have fine, you can have thin. And so you could just make a pile of these you could, if you had time, you could make them with a pencil sharpener. But if you, you know, and I, like I said, a knife does all kinds of other things too. So, all right, now that that is out of the way, I have proven to myself that both work. And knowing that they both work, this leads me, how should I put this? So I can still move this around and keep this flame going. That flame sustained itself a lot longer than the other one. It went out. Let's see if I can blow it back into life. There we go, I got the flame to come back. And see, if I'd have had tender ready, that wouldn't have happened. Oh, I had some fall on the ground. Or you can just put leaves on it. Whew, look out. <laughs> Time to stomp that out. <laughs> Let's get rid of this. All right, so what's it gonna be? A knife or a pencil sharpener? <laughs> All right. My conclusion is they both work. One works better than the other. <laughs> now, with that said, like I said, they both work. I have to address winter survival kit compared to summer survival kit because I've seen, there's been way too many comments about, and, and there's been people that's been boasting about, oh, I can do this, oh, I can do that. Well, I don't think you can. <laughs> or at least it's not smart to. Maybe you're a lot tougher than me, but, uh, things like people saying things like they can go out into the wilderness, when, wilderness with nothing but a little survival blanket or an Altoids tan. Uh, that's not good information to be putting out there and for people to be thinking about. So, with that said, a summer survival kit should be, it's totally different from a winter kit. So a summer survival kit, you need a hammock, keep you off the ground, away from the bugs. You need at least a two quart canteen. You need a, um, a uh, water filter of some kind or purification tablets and you need a bug net of some kind to protect protect your face keep the bugs off of you all right now 
and we're talking about minimalist absolute minimalist i'm going to show you what i consider to be the absolute minimal wintertime survival kit and you really need to carry a backpack full of stuff but some people like to train and they like to <clears throat> they like to uh you know see how tough they are and see how little they can get by with but to me this is the absolute minimalist kit and i'm gonna explain why uh <clears throat> You'll need some kind of a ferro rod or a fire kit of some kind because fire is very, very important. I also like to have a ferro rod because matches get wet and the striking surface wears out, all right? And lighters sometimes don't work below freezing temperatures. A ferro rod always works, all right? As long as there's some, some kind of dry tender. And if you have a knife and a machete or a knife and a saw, uh, you can get to some dry wood. All right, so those things right there, some kind of fire is an absolute basic to me. And then the bare, bare, bare minimum, bare minimum to me is a folding saw and a knife. All right, this is a Mora. It doesn't cost much. That is a Mora Companion HD. That is probably, that is the king of survival knives because you could buy three and carry one on your belt, one around your neck, and one in your pack. And then this is a Baco Laplander. Silky saws saw a lot better, but a silky saw is a, hold on, my, my camera's drifting down. <laughs> a silky saw is on the pull stroke only, so sometimes they'll bind up and break, but a Baco Laplander is a push-pull saw. It's very hard to break that blade. But with these two items, you can build a shelter. You can build a shelter frame, um, which is most important with the rest of this kit. And you can also procure firewood. All right, now the other things that you need in here is you need a tube tent. All right, a tube tent because it's something you can crawl inside. It has a floor and it has two walls. So it's gonna protect you from the leaves on the ground and it's gonna protect you from the rain and the snow on the top. And since it's reflective, it'll reflect your body heat. Very, very small, doesn't weigh much. Then, instead of a survival blanket, you need two Mylar bags, all right? Or they call them emergency bivvies. And what this is, is these are the same size as a sleeping bag, but they're really, really thin and they're reflective on the inside. Now, the reason that I say that it's a, a bare minimum requirement of two is you take one and you fill it completely full of leaves and slide it inside your tube tent, fill it with leaves, slide it in, and that becomes your mattress. That's your insulation from the ground. And then this one, you can either crawl in this and lay on top of that, or you can fill this with leaves and lay it on top of you like an extra thick blanket. So you'll be sandwiching yourself between two bags full of leaves. So those, these threes, and these really weigh very, very, very little. So that is a bare minimum. And then to me, if you can get it, this is not a backpack, this is a sling bag. And the stuff that's in this sling bag, this thing, you sling it over your shoulder with one strap, or you could get a fanny pack and it'll carry the same stuff. But I kind of feel like you need a small pot for boiling water because below freezing temperatures, you can't rely on a water filter uh, in the winter time. You may wind up having to boil snow or ice. So you need a pot for that. And then you need a cup of some kind with a lid, preferably. See, those fit in, either fit inside each other or the bivy sack fits in one. Well, actually, that's the way I do it. Look, there's a, instead of taking up room like that, what I do is I put the lid inside here, and then I'll put like a bivy sack in here, and then put this in here like that. All right. And then on the outside, you're going to need a small container. And then there's room for other stuff in here too. There's another little zipper pouch in here. You also need a small flask for carrying water. All right. Of course, if you're like me, you also carry a pouch. So that is enough about the minimalist survival kit. That is what I think. That's what I think that you should carry. Look at this, my mirror's messed up. <laughs> that is what I think you should carry. Now. The end of the video, um, the end of the video, 
uh, I'm gonna, it's kind of a public service announcement because I'm gonna talk about, this is another thing that people always comment on. And I think it's funny that it's about neck knives and neck carry and wearing it around your neck that people comment and they say, oh, you'll strangle yourself. And I'm thinking like, no, you're not gonna strangle yourself. There's no way. Well, I read about an accident that was posted on Bushcraft USA and there's a even worse thing that I never thought of and nobody else ever thought of. So I have a variety of neck knives here that we're gonna talk about and I'm gonna show you, all right? So I'm gonna take my jacket off and I'm gonna freeze for you just to prove a point, <laughs> okay? All right, so let's take a look at neck knives and I'm gonna explain the dangers of what I'm thinking of. All right, what all is right? a neck knife? A neck knife is something that you carry around your neck. Now for me, normally on my machete, I will attach a knife. And I carry it either on my belt or on my pack so that I have my machete and my knife, all right? And sometimes a ferro rod, that becomes a complete survival kit. Now, I do like a neck knife. Now, the problem is some people, they complain, they boo-hoo and cry, and they say that you'll strangle yourself, all right? Well, if you put your neck knife on paracord and tie it around a knot, I guess if you get hung on something, you could very easily become strangled. So if you're gonna do this, put on a cord lock. That way if it does get snagged, nothing will happen. But you're supposed to wear it when you're hiking in your shirt. That way it's not flopping around everywhere and it's not gonna snag on anything, okay? So those are your options, okay? You, have, you can have paracord with a cord like that, or you can have webbing with a little fast tex buckle. Now this buckle is not going to hold up your body weight. It is not. So if you snag this on anything, that plastic is gonna break. Now like I said, when you're hiking, slide it in your shirt. Don't let it be flopping around everywhere. And that's gonna lead to something else that I'm talking about. You can also have, this is a little bitty tiny martini knife. You can also have one that is bungee corded, all right? And see, having any knife is better than no knife at all. Because like I said, when it comes to the pencil sharpeners, for some reason, I'm always thinking of that episode of Everybody Loves Raymond, where Amy's dad was talking to them about smoking. And, he, and his, I can hear his tone of voice. Why don't you just drink poison? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, when people tell me, you know, look, that's safe. <laughs> when people tell me, you should bring a pencil sharpener. I always think to myself, why don't you just bring a knife? <laughs> so even if it's a small neck knife, that thing right there will still kick up some shavings. All right, so there's another one. And then of course, you can have the bungee cord woo, with no knot on the end and the quick, the, the, uh, quick lock thing. And that, the, the other idea behind that is it also, if you want to choke up on it, you can pull it up like that and tuck it in real close. But usually what I do is I'll, I'll leave it at a happy medium and slide it in there. And so you got your knife and you got your ferro rod. So if things got real ugly, really, really ugly, you could probably get by with a knife and a ferro rod. All right. Now, this is the ugly part that I'm fixing to talk about, all right? Let's turn the camera around so we can get another different I'm always preaching to the naysayers about wearing a neck knife and they're saying you're gonna choke yourself. Well, I had read on Bushcraft USA, somebody had posted that they had found a guy with, that had impaled himself on a neck knife. And I was thinking, man, how could this happen? And I got to thinking about something. Now, let's say your average person, you know, if you weigh, 180 to, I don't know, 220 pounds. You know, some people weigh 300. If you're hiking along, okay, now this is something for y'all all to think about because like I said, this is how old Dave wears his knife. Because if you're, if you're wearing it like this and you trip and you fall, see, it's gonna stay laid relatively flat. Now, I think my only way I've, I've been trying to figure out how this guy impaled himself and I think he died. He actually died from it. I think what he did is he must have had his knife out and as he went to fall, it must have somehow got wedged in here like this. Somehow the flopping around, it must have wedged around somewhere in here 
and then he fell on it and it went in his chest. Because if you think about it, your body weight, look, like say a typical Morris sheath, plastic sheath, it's got the two holes in the bottom so that water can, won't be trapped in there. But I don't know. I, I could see that if you're tripping and falling and this thing swinging around and somehow or another, it just happens to land like that as you're hitting the ground, I could see your body weight pushing this through the sheath and into it. So that's another thing to think about right there. Right there. Now, one more little thing that I want to show you that somebody asked about. Okay? A couple of comments in the past, people had talked about the curls and feather sticks and shavings. And uh, with a Scandi grind, you pretty much, I don't know, it's, it, it, it carves up the best shavings, I think. You can either do them thick or you can do them thin. Now, there's a difference in curls and bugles. Curls curl up, bugles are like spirals, and the spirals seem to catch a spark better. Now, if you have a knife that's got a primary and a secondary grind, like this one, it's got the primary and then the secondary. Scandi grinds have a Scandi grind and a micro bevel, but there's a way that you can hold. Some knives have the perfect grind. This is a Cold Steel Outdoorsman Light, and I kind of hate to even show this knife because they quit making it, and it's the grind on this thing is just perfect. So uh, I'm gonna ease down here and I'm gonna uh, show you exactly what I'm talking about on this. All right, so let's see. Let me move this camera right there. All right, now, you can take a knife, break that off. You can take a knife and if, you're, if you cut straight down, Get your bark off. All right, now. All right. That is a good example of curls. Whoop. That is a good example of curls. They curl up flat. Now, you see how I was using the knife straight down? Just like that. If you hold the knife at an angle, you'll get bugles. Now this is not a good stick. See how it completely changes the curls? It makes them like bugles. Now that other one, this wood is kind of wet. I'm gonna grab that other piece of wood and see if it does better. This is what came off the other stick. Uh, these, I call them bugles or spirals. And I knew these would come off better because this is, um, this stick was drier. Now, Morse Kohansky, if you ever want to kind of challenge yourself with these, he always said that the student passes his test with five curls and his instructors are expected to make 11 curls. So that's something you can shoot for when you're messing around with this. So let's try this one more time just for the heck of it with the dry stick, so you can kind of get an idea. Let's see, <clears throat> it's kind of hard filming with a GoPro like this. All right, so let's go right here, straight down. Now that stick's about to break. Okay, that was a good example right there. All right, now you saw how I was going straight down And these are great for sitting on the fire. See how they curl up? Those are curls. Now I'm gonna try again. Hold the knife at an angle. You see the difference, Adam? And also, I'm not just at an angle, but I'm also moving in the direction. Look, the top broke off. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, these these little things here, the spirals or bugles, are good for the ferro rod to catch. All right, so that's just a little something right there that I wanted to talk about, about the difference between taking a knife and going straight down and being at an angle and pushing in that direction as you're going down.
all right so i hope you had fun i hope you enjoyed it uh it is never my purpose to step on anybody's toes or to say that your idea is no good for me being on youtube it's to help you to educate you and to entertain you all right and the help part also means just like cody lundeen said uh bushcraft and camping is all about fun but wilderness survival and especially these people that are saying that they're survival instructors uh that's a pretty that's a that's a pretty important title because your safety and your well-being should be their concern all right so you have to know what works what doesn't work what's fun and then what you can rely on and then what you can <laughs> rely on to be not any fun so hope you had fun hope you enjoyed it and uh for you search and rescue people whenever you find a guy clinging to life clutching a pencil sharpener in one hand and clutching an altoid survival tin in the other always remember as you're helping that victim and getting them back to safety why didn't you just carry a knife <laughs> so <laughs> that's the part of educating and entertaining <laughs> take it easy enjoy life get out do things and we shall see you in the next one.